My name's Jorb. I love gear, and today we're talking about a super strange one, the GR700 guitar synthesizer. Could you guess? It's a synthesizer you control with a guitar. It's pretty much the same architecture as the JX3P. This one I got a, uh, at a good deal. Didn't know it was broken. Turned out to be broken. Uh, two voices were bad. I successfully fixed one and did not successfully fix the other. So I have one clone voice chip in here, but all six are working now. Uh, and I'm just going to run through some patches. The, the, the Mostly the point of this video is, hey, I have one of these in 2021, and I'm more than comfortable as answering questions about it. So uh, if you see one show up used and you're saying, hey, I don't know if this will work for me or I don't know what this can do, if it'll fit in my setup, that's I want to make it clear that I have this and I love talking about gear. <laughs> so you ask away in the comments this related compare or contrast with anything else, whatever. Uh, that's it. If at any point you decide you like what I'm talking about, leave the video a like. If at any point you say, you know what? Maybe this guy has something good to say. I want to hear him again. Feel free to just feel free to subscribe. Okay, that's my stupid pitch. <laughs> you probably aren't used to seeing me hold a guitar, and I'm not used to it either. It's been a very long time uh, because I know people are going to ask. Uh, I built this. It is an MJT body uh, and an all parts neck and a few other things. Uh, but it's got this big weird pickup on it right now to play with this big weird synth module. Uh, imagine for a second it's 1984. Uh, Roland has all this tech for synthesizers, but they say, you know what guitarists want to sound not like a guitar? <laughs> and we have all this synth tech. Let's put it in a big box where guitarists can stomp their feet on it, and then they'll play it. <laughs> and we'll sell more things. Uh, um, first, it is like the JX3P in its design and its architecture, but it has the uh, filter VCA chips that are the same as the Juno. Uh, if you're familiar with the Juno 106... Uh, there are voice chips in there that go bad over time. Those are the same voice chips in here, uh, not the oscillators. It's the VCA and the VCF in one package covered in like a silicone or a rubber uh, that over time gets hard and either um, moves contacts around that they aren't making connection strongly anymore or becomes conductive so that resistance has changed throughout this thing. Uh, and people will fix them by disassembling them, soaking them in acetone, desoldering things, putting them all back on. Uh, and you can do pretty well with that, but you should expect to replace the voice chips in one that hasn't had them replaced already. I think that's really important to know that there's almost like a finite life on um, pretty essential part of every one of these that's out there. I did that on one of the oscillators, and I failed to do it on another. So I bought I have one replacement uh, clone oscillator in here, and one that's been restored. But all six voices do work. So generally, what are we looking at? <laughs> Uh, you get this guitar input, and you have some controls on it um, that bring you all the way back to the board. And I won't go into too much detail, but just to tell you what you're seeing here on the panel, using my big toe to turn off buttons, <laughs> uh, each of those is an individual string and an individual voice. So it all turned off. You don't hear anything. There's the first four. And as I play these last two strings, you do not hear anything. That's so you can have... Uh, some of your strings go through um, this and make synth sounds, and some of them stay normy guitar sounds, um, which I think could be really interesting. Play big, rich pads and leave them held, and then go and do your riffs on your low notes. Um, it does have a chromatic and a not chromatic mode, so this is chromatic. Actually, this is a better patch for that, I think. Chromatic. Yeah. And I'll bend. Okay, and then a chromatic is off. <laughs> It'll get everything in between as well. And I'm sure you just noticed the tracking is not that good. It very often will pick up weird bips and bleeps, and I'm normally a very percussive, sort of sloppy right hand guitar player. Uh, that doesn't work very well with this. I feel like you have to be really deliberate, almost monophonic. 
Treat it like a bass in some cases, and I find it tracks pretty good when you do that. Uh, you know, I don't have much to say, and this isn't something I'm particularly thrilled about. I think it's cool and weird, but after playing it, it's like, this is a less convenient way to do something I already have. So uh, it works with the Roland PG200, the programmer for the JX3P. So I'll pull that on and mess with some patches later. But I'm going to demo some sounds, and that's pretty much it. Uh, my name's Torb. I love gear. Enjoy some of these wacky noises. And just quickly how you navigate bank and then your bank and then once you're in here you're just changing the specific patch your second digit here okay Tracking is bad on this one. And I will say, tracking in part is probably bad because of, uh, I do not expect <laughs> this will be a permanent addition to this guitar. Uh, I've merely duct taped it in place with a pick to help get the height right. That might be part of why my tracking is bad, as I have definitely not dialed that in. If you used to like chopping chords, it hates that. You've really got to mute the strings in between every one. Actually, that sounded okay. <laughs> I can imagine opening show with this. Thank <laughs> you. 
I remade a guitar. I really remade a guitar. (laughs) 